So with F1 at its midpoint after 11 amazing races, I think it's about time to do a mid-season review of all the things that have happened. The one dilemma I have though is what I'm going to name this series because I'm probably going to do it every once in a while. Hmm. Ooh. He's Daniel. He won't let me leave. Please help me. I beg. Perfect. Yo guys, it's your boy GCKGP here and you're watching F1TY. This of course is a series where I bring you up to scratch of what F1 had to offer over the last 6 months. So what's been happening this year? Well there's been a titanic scrap between Mercedes and Red Bull featuring the cleanest racing I've ever seen. <laughs> Every team's form seems to be going up and down as if you're on a roller coaster. Unless you're Orlando Norris, of course. And this year has been so crazy that even Williams have scored double points. Frank Williams was just doing dancing like Prime Charlie D'Amelio when he saw that happening. But more on that later, because now let's get into how I think the teams have fared compared to last year. So leading both championships so far are the Silver Arrows Mercedes. After showing flawless pace in practice, Mercedes did Mercedes things and caught up to Red Bull by the start of the season, starting strong with a win. And from there it's been more up and down than Lando Norris in the US. They still lead both championships from some great driving from star driver Lewis Hamilton and some amazing bowling skills from Valtteri Bottas. I think it would definitely be fair to say that although it was worse than last season, they're still holding up pretty strong really. Second right now is Red Bull, after having their first win stolen away from them and a close fight from then on, Red Bull went on a dominant run of 5 race wins, one of which including a win from their second driver Checo Perez, which hasn't happened since the Stone Ages. Checo inherited the lead after his teammate Max's tyres decided not to exist and Lewis's brakes forgot to turn on. But Lewis decided that the dominance was getting boring, so he decided to punt Max into the wall, causing Max to have a 51G incident. And after some bowling into Hungary, Red Bull would have definitely have liked to come out with some better look. Definitely closer to Mercedes though than last year for sure. Tied third right now is British meme team McLaren. After being carried by meme lord Lando Norris with a couple of podiums and somewhat poor performances from seasoned veteran Daniel Ricciardo, McLaren finds itself in a stronger position than last year with one driver who might as well be driving last year's car. But this only shows how far McLaren have come over the last three years or so. So the other team tied third is the prancing horse Ferrari. After having a year where they were Sometimes may be good, sometimes may be shit. Being tied third with two poles and a couple of podiums is definitely an improvement. But I am all if Ricardo improves from McLaren, then Ferrari might be left in the dust. So, after being jumped by Ferrari after a rebrand, Alpine find themselves in fourth after a maiden win from Esteban Ocon and some masterful defensive driving from Mr. GP2 engine. They definitely have a worse car than last year, but a win is definitely nothing to complain about. After a pretty strong season from Pierre Gasly with some strong qualifying, poor luck, and one podium, AlphaTauri 6 6 in the standings not being helped by the safest and calmest driver in existence, Yuki Tsunoda. Pretty strong though from the Italian sister team. After this team rebranded and also lost pace, Aston Martin Racing Point Force India Jordan was astounded by their lack of pace and a very, very calm Lauren Stroll I'm extremely angry. felt targeted by the 2021 placeholder regulations with their low rig concept raking in low points. With two podiums from their new spin master, one of which was taken from them, it's surprising how low they are in the standings, which is a testament to how competitive the midfield is. And after scoring double points last time out in Hungary, Williams find themselves in 8th after the one, the only, Gautifi bagged big points while second driver George Russell scored his first points since GP2. This shows the progress that Williams have made scoring double points for the first time since the dinosaurs were knocking about. 
and after some mediocre performances from their drivers, Alfa Romeo Cyber find themselves in a rather shocking position. The Iceman seems to be enjoying his last year of his hobby, while Italian Jesus has not risen on the third day, yet the third year of his career, while it seems to be the ever more likely that he will lose his seat. This team seems to be on a downwards trend that's steeper than the cliff I'm about to throw myself off. To be honest, I'm even surprised Alfa Romeo are still involved with this damn team. So last and very very much least, we have Haas. The American team draped in a Russian flag with a Russian driver, the son of the GOAT Michael Schumacher, which is rumoured to be sold to the Russian Mafia and is so far last that when their cars finish the rest of the grid is already packed up. I mean do I have to say anything more than that? Right so next up we have our segment of our show where we give every driver a couple of lines based on ha Harry I didn't mean those type of lines. Go back. Right, so next up we have the segment of our show where we give every driver a couple of sentences based on their season so far, and then we give them a three word season review. First up we got Lewis. I think Lewis has had a pretty good season so far, but he's only in first because of Verstappen's bad luck really. My three word review would be, that's pretty good. Right, so next up we have Max, and I think Max should be leading the championship comfortably, but he has had some horrid luck that's brought him right back. For this one I'll say, awesome unlucky next up we got the meme lord right now i think lando is carrying mclaren so for him i'll say best driver currently next up we got valtteri who i think is massively underperforming so i'll give him a time to go so sergio's done an all right job so far so for him i'll say solid second driver now carlos has done a really good job especially without scoring charles so far so i'll say heavily underrated driver and talking about Charles, Charles has done an alright season so far, by the qualifying antics, so I'll give him a... That's pretty good! His good mate Pierre has done a great job in his machinery in contrast to his teammate, so I'll give him a... Deserve better teams. Now Daniel Ricciardo this season, he's had a pretty yikes season so far, so for me he gets a... Please Huey soon. Please Daniel Rubin. Alcon's had a decent season so far, especially with that win in Hungary, so I'll say newest race winner. Alonso has definitely proven a lot of us wrong and shown his skill to us, so I'll give him a defensive master veteran. Vettel's had his ups and downs, but still, it's really good, so I'll give him a pronto sep. Sorry, I'm a child. Sonoda is a rookie, but I think he really should be doing better, so he can get a Crash Tappen's second coming. Now, Stroll's season has been alright, I think, but it's mostly the car's fault where he's down there. So he gets a, the car's fault. So Nicky has done a madness, honestly. So from him, I think he gets a keep him Williams. I swear to God, if they don't keep him now. So for George, there's only three words that need to be said here. Give Mercedes seat. Now, Kimi seems to be a bit less into the sport this year. So hobby getting boring. Giovinazzi is also struggling and should be doing better. So Jesus won't rise. Mick has had some fairly good standout performances this year so far, but I'll give him a less FP3 crashes for Nikita Mazepin. I mean, and I don't even know what to say. Oh, oh yeah, Russian Mafia strikes. Right, so all we have got coming up next is a comparison of how much points each driver that's done two or more seasons has got in the first 11 races this year and last year. This one took a while to put together. So Lewis has 195 points this season and 230 last season. The drop of points being due to a relatively slower car and some other incidents. Max has 187 points this season and 147 last season. The increase of points being due to the Red Bull team having a better car and also a second driver. Lando Norris has 113 points this season and 65 last season. It's almost a doubling of points, just further showing Lando's amazing performances this season. Valtteri Bottas has 108 points this season and 161 last season. This shows how Bottas has kind of fallen off under pressure, not even there to pick up the scraps from Lewis Hamilton. This season, Sergio Perez has 104 points, although last season he had 68. Although Perez was on fire in that midfield car, it shows how even mediocre performances consistently in a better Red Bull can still get you more points. Carlos Sainz has 83 points this season and 51 last season. Once again, the same as Perez's situation, he wouldn't be ahead of Charles right now if it wasn't for his DNF last race help. 
are talking about Sherrills. This season he has 80 points, where last season he had 63. The point increase also shows how the Ferrari has developed over the last year. Pierre Gasly has 50 points this season and 53 last season. This just shows how that win last year in Monza worked wonders for Gasly's points wise. Ricardo has 50 points this season and last year he had 78. The big drop representing Ricardo's lack of form this season and uncomfortableness with the McLaren. Esteban Ocon has 39 points this season, but last season he had 36 points. Once again, the race went doing wonders for Ocon's points, otherwise he would be on like 11 or something. Vettel has 30 points this season, but last season he had 17. This just shows how shit he was last year and how shit the Ferrari was as well. Stroll this season has 18 points, last season he had 57. Just shows the lack of pace in the Aston Martin this year and Stroll's bad luck. Latifi has 6 points this season, but 0 last season. Only one word needed. GOAT. And that's on period. Russell has 4 points this season, but 0 last season. Just give this guy the damn Mercedes seat already. And Raikkonen had 2 points this year and last year. Surprisingly, the only driver with the same points as last year. Giovinazzi has 1 point this season and 3 points last season. Italian Jesus might have to be sent to Formula E. Alright, with that segment coming to an end, up next we have a part of our show where I list 5 drivers that have had exceptional performances so far this season. In 5th place I put Carlos Sainz who's done a massive job getting used to Ferrari and with a podium already you have to say he's done well. For 4th I have to say George Russell who would be higher on this list if he scored a couple more points for Williams taking the chances he's already had. Getting the Williams into Q3 though is definitely an impressive feat. So in third I'll have to say Lewis Hamilton because he got up to grips with his pretty skittish car and is still winning races while his teammate can't even claim a win, which he will get onto later. Claiming second place on this list we have Lando Norris on his stunning form and to be honest you lot it was hard to decide whether he was first or second but I think that first place edges him out ever so slightly. And taking the top spot, we have Max Verstappen, who in reality should be leading the championship if it wasn't for some bowling. Right, so with that out of the way, now we have the complete opposite with me ranking the drivers with the worst form so far this season. But for this one, I only have three to list off for you this time. So, first off, in third, I have to say Lance Stroll, who doesn't really have bad form, but is just super unlucky. His teammate Sal Vettel has had two podiums on track, yet Lance's best result has been in 8th place. Taking 2nd spot has to be Danny Rick as his poor form in the McLaren has bagged him less points than last year in the Renault and less than half the points of Lando his teammate. That's just not good enough and I really hope it improves. You already know who probably takes top spot as Bowling Bottas has been shocking this season. Not all of it is his fault but in reality he's not dealing with the cards he's been dealt and I think it's time to go to Alpha, Williams or other things. I don't have time to explain it here but I made a video on it a while back which is still relevant now which you should go check out. But that is going to wrap up F1 this year so far and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have feel free to slap a like on this video or subscribe if you are new to this channel. You can also follow me on Twitter which will be the first link in the description but it's been a pleasure waffling at you today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Please notice me F1G.